FM, The Source. Day, Robin. Yes, it is. I love this. I'm, I am a sucker for like a romantic movie. Mm-hmm. Is that unusual for a guy to say that? I don't think so. I don't think it's unusual for a guy to feel that, but I don't think most guys will admit it. Yeah, yeah, I that's think. right. That's right. <laughs> the guys will watch it with their ladies and then they'll pretend, you know, but they really like it. Do you, do you think men and women have a different concept of what romance is do you think like all movies make it seem like we're clumsy like we don't get it like yeah we think it's like the it's a candle on a table and, and, and you know and and, and barry white music <laughs> yeah right exactly exactly or something like that um we have a, a book about this uh it's written by barrett brogard she's on the phone the book is titled on romantic love simple truths about a complex emotion and uh, Barrett has some credentials. Let me brag about her just a second. She's a professor of philosophy and the director of the Brogard Lab for Multisensory Research at the University of Miami. And she's a professor of philosophy at the University of Oslo, Norway, as well. So which accent does she have, the Miami accent or the Norwegian accent? <laughs> I don't know. Barrett Brogard. Good morning, Barrett. How are you? Hi. How are you doing? Oh, that's Norway. I can hear the accent. Yeah. That's the Norway accent. <laughs> yeah. yeah, thank you. That's a very romantic country, Norway, I always feel. Don't you feel that way? Or, or do you not feel it when you're from there? Uh, well, yeah, it's. Uh, I'm actually from Denmark, but um, that's pretty close. Okay. And, and the, yeah, I, I feel Miami is a bit more romantic. Do you know, I, I have often thought that romance is one of the things that separates human beings from the rest of creation, from the rest of the animal ca- kingdom. Yes, uh, that's uh, a, a hypothesis that it definitely is. There uh, may be uh, some other species that have romantic love. Uh, it's hard to confirm exactly yeah. whether it's attraction or attachment or whether it's actually romantic love. But that raises an interesting question of, uh, so why do we have that? What, what, what is it needed for if it's not needed in other species? Do you, do you know, uh, but I think we all feel it. I mean, every boy, every girl has had a crush, right? Isn't that like, yeah, isn't yeah. That like the beginning of, of romantic feelings? It's. It is. I mean, it's. Um. It's there. There's a theory that it doesn't last long, and it's because it just. You just need to. It needs to last long enough for, for um people at least like our ancestors, uh, children to, to be old enough to, that that one parent sort of could could uh, look after them. So it was. It's sort of ensured like a close pair bonding for a year or two or three. How were you able <laughs> so to? That's a hypothesis. How how uh, are you able to write such fabulous books since you have uh, synesthesia? Oh, that's, uh, yeah, I, I do have synesthesia. I work on uh, um, on synesthesia as well, so it was just an unusual coupling of either color and music or color and letters or emotions and colors, and that's, so that's the one I have, but I think that I sort of, uh, I'm, I'm used to connecting uh, different topics and making them sort of stand out in a new way by being illuminated by other topics that I've worked on. So I work sort of uh, uh, across many fields. The, the book is called On Romantic Love. It is currently number one on Amazon in the, cog- in the cognitive psychology <laughs> category. That's pretty good. When did the book come out? Just... It uh, the, well, the paperback version just came out, uh, so that's uh, always an attraction for people because it's it's um, usually a lot cheaper, and um, so so yeah. So it was it's been out. The the uh, hard copy came out um, in 2015, but then we just had the paper paperback come out. So one of the formulas for a romantic comedy is is the man and the woman meet each other under bad circumstances. He does doesn't really want to have anything to do with her. She can't stand him. And then the story progresses, and little by little, they fall in love. 
I, I don't know that that's ever happened to anybody I really know. <laughs> but, <laughs> yes. But, no, it, um, it usually doesn't happen that way, though I, mean, I suppose it could. <laughs> yeah, it's a good story, right? But, but how, what, yes, it is a great story. <laughs> do, we, do we use romantic feelings as a way to... Um, let's see, what, what's uh, like, like self reflect so that we know where we're going? Uh, in other words, if, I, we, I, yeah. if you have a crush on somebody, I mean, do you act on it? Do you, do you write a letter? What do you do? I mean, you, you, you can, um, yeah, if you have a crush on someone, what, what do you do? Yeah, uh, I well, mean, you, I mean, isn't, you, you isn't, can, isn't that the beginning of romance, the crush? Yes. Yes, yes. Uh, I mean, of course, you can you can check whether it's mutual in in various ways. So, one of I mean, you can look at for some of the signs. So, for instance, if uh, they look at you a little bit, just a little bit more than they look at other people, or they try to to talk to you a little bit more. It's just sort of subtle things that we can pick up on. And if it looks like they have a crust, then it's you can go ahead and <laughs> ask them out or indicate that. Hey, what about? this movie or there's this new opening of uh, a gallery um, yeah. and, and or alternatively you can if they don't think you're not sure it's mutual there are ways you can make it mutual or increase the likelihood that it will become mutual which which we have also explored in in uh, in an outside the laboratory but love is very very emotional I mean you can be really uh, satisfied with who you have but then other people might be obsessed with love or they might have this degree of jealousy where it can be hurtful. Yeah, so can, the love can definitely be hurtful and of course when it is mutual that it feels a lot better than if it's uh, one way, right? So mm -hmm. if it's not reciprocated we we it will usually be painful uh, and, and then it's it tends to be when, when it's more obsessive, but though people can also in, be obsessive in relationships when they have more of a need for attachment than other people. So you can be this more of a clingy, have a more of a clingy, um, as you would say in colloquial language, a clingy attachment style, also known as an anxious attachment style, as opposed to being more avoidant. So if you have that, you will be the more approached, the approaching type of person. Um, you would need more time with the other person, and you might obsess over the other what the other person is doing and so on yes and that, that can also be painful if that's uh, uneven or unbalanced how how important do you think looks are or physical attraction is it obviously matters to I mean in order to notice other people but it turns out that things that that matter a lot more um, at least uh, when you get a little <laughs> little older, I don't mean necessarily elderly, but, but a little older than say 20 years old. It's uh, also how people are dressed, how much they take care of themselves. Um, it doesn't have to be that you're wearing a suit, right? It might be not be your style, but if right. you if you have put some thought into how you're dressing, and uh, that might actually attract people's attention as, uh, just as much. And then over time, of course, it matters less what people look like, and the personality starts to matter a lot more. Can people choose to fall in love with somebody? Can they learn to to love someone, or is this strictly just a, a wow yeah, moment? Yeah, I mean, they're... They can. I mean, there are experiments about the older things that you can do. So there's a famous one that was circulating in the media uh, a few years ago about uh, some um, person who replicated an old study that was done in a laboratory where you have to look each other deeply in the eyes and ask certain questions that become more and more intimate and uh, and require answers to, that reveal sort of your real feelings and what you really would do in critical situations. And that was uh, shown that, that, yes, that could uh, definitely create a kind of attraction. That would be the start of a relationship. There the are a number of factors. Um, if, you, if you look at, uh, at body language, literature and body language, um, there are ways that if you hold your body language in a certain way, for instance, you might increase uh, the, the, a, a, a certain person's uh, interest in you and so on. So there are, there are definitely ways you can do it. Another experiment that was done was... Uh, um, creating excitement. So in the, in this experiment, uh, w a, a researcher who pretended to be a student um, was interviewing men uh, about something neutral on either a really, really risky, scary bridge 
or on unstable ground. And and uh, at the end of the the that interviews for that she was doing, she was a researcher, but pretending to be a, a student doing a school project. At the end of the, that, she said, "Oh, here's my phone number. If you want to, uh, if you have any questions later." And sure enough, all the people in the very risky, scary Brits that sort of put your life in danger, uh, they were calling her afterwards, but not to ask about the project, but to ask her out. Ah, so, oh, uh, so excitement, yeah. So it's, it's sort of like scary excitement, thrilling excitement uh, that is known to that can sort of boost uh, romance in relationships where people have sort of grown a little tired of each other, where it can help uh, make people make people fall in love. Mm-hmm. Do the same thing where the man is asking the questions and and the, and every once in a while he shows like a large amount of money and then and then <laughs> <laughs> and, and then to the next group, he doesn't show money at all. I bet you the first group gives him a lot of calls. <laughs> I bet you're right. <laughs> yeah, that would be an interesting experiment to do. <laughs> uh, the book is called On Romantic Love. I found it on uh, Amazon, and it's getting some good reviews. Um, give us uh, a website so we can get the book. Uh, Ber- Barry, can you give us a, a website? Uh, sorry, what were you saying? Is it lovesicklove.com? Is that the website? Oh, the book site. Oh, I'm so I'm I'm sorry. Yes, it's uh, no, that's um, um, not the best site. The, the best site is Psychology Today, uh, the mysteries of love. Oh, okay, okay, excellent. Well, thank you for getting that on there. Uh, we'll make sure this goes up as a recorded podcast. We have the cover of the book on the podcast, and, and say hello to your dog, uh, <laughs> Bar- Barrett. Thank you for being on the show with us today. <laughs> well, thank you so much for having me. Right, we'll be right back. Broadcasting from the Paddock Mall Studios, this is WOCA, Ocala, Gainesville, The Villages, 1370 AM, 963 FM, The Source. Here are today's headlines from The Source, WOCA. A bill allowing payday lenders to make bigger loans and charge higher fees has taken another step forward in the Florida legislature. Minister Rachel Gunner Shepard told lawmakers the price for payday loans is all.